So, all aboard. I'm about to take us on a short journey into the world of text-based public art. Here's an, a new, more contemporary library in, in the city of North Vancouver. Uh, the Canadian artist Ian Baxter, and he actually changed his name to Baxter and, formerly of the Anything Company, fairly famous um, artist. And, and here he installed uh, text on the windows at the library. Uh, the Vancouver's public library main branch also uh, has some public art. I mean, here's this text-based work that responds to its context. It, it talks about the uh, history of, of Vancouver as well, when neon and signs were, were big iconic features. One of the most well-respected or well-loved works uh, is Love by the artist Robert Indiana. Uh, you know, an, it's an iconic sculpture from the pop art era. It's based on paintings he did, but then he's made many versions of this Love sculpture and displayed them all around the world. And another type of um, text-based public art uh, is where this, in this case, Yoko Ono, uh, was invited by uh, an art center in, in Minneapolis to uh, take over a billboard. And so she put this word, imagine peace, which has, of course, many levels of meaning. I mean, it, it co really comes from the John Lennon lyrics, you know, imagine all the people living a life in peace. One of the, the pioneers of text-based art was Jenny Holzer, who uh, really focused on words in, in public space to express ideas. But also she used the words as an aesthetic experience and also pioneered digital art. Another form of then kind of a uh, high-tech art, but this one's not moving. Her work sometimes actually changes. But here the artist, Gavin Turk, uh, installed this, this number. And this number signifies the uh, population of the world, you know, over 7 billion at the moment that it was installed. Um, it doesn't change, though. It's not like a clock where it keeps changing. This one on the Bob Rennie Gallery in, in, downtown, in, you know, in Chinatown in Vancouver, Everything is Going to Be All Right uh, by Martin Creed. He, he's actually had this a similar one in other places, and wherever it shows, it kind of addresses its context, much as this work by Tony Latour, who uh, formerly taught at uh, Capilano, uh, She's a, a Vancouver-based artist. Let's heal the divide. And again, you know, the location of this at the juncture between downtown east side Vancouver and the business district kind of talks about the site, the specific site. So those words can be very powerful. Whereas this one much earlier by uh, Henry Sang in Vancouver uh, is in two long lines of words. One is in Chinook, which was an early coastal trading language, and the other in English placed side by side as a way, it's a metaphor of, of the ongoing development of intercultural communications in this region. And I think we all know this, this work. It's, that wasn't created as public art, but it certainly is iconic. I mean, here, I, I think this has generated a lot of other artists who have done uh, text-based signs. That's, you know, the name of the city, Amsterdam, or the 100 in Vancouver for its centennial. Uh, and then again, in the same way, an instant icon by the artist Ken Lum was uh, to place this 57-foot sculpture, you know, at the uh, at the divide between East Vancouver, facing back westward towards downtown to kind of say we are here. Now we're going into Richmond, and here we have a work by Gwen Boyle over at the Lotus on Westminster Highway, and and again. Uh, in this case, the words are smaller. You have to get up close and personal to read the line of poetry. And, you know, it's talking about Earth and, and the evolution of the wor world. And there was also some uh, Chinese calligraphy in it from Lao Tse. And this one, again, very small text. You know, you have to get up really close to this one at Steveston Fire Hall to read the, read the text. But it, all t it talks about, from oral history of people living in the Steveston area, going fishing, going swimming, going running to hear the fire trucks. Another one by the same artist, Blake Williams. Uh, again, you know, you have to get close to this one because it's on this large mosaic mural at, at above the, what is it, the Shoppers Drug Mart, I believe, uh, at Broadmoor. And uh, again, it, it has talks about nature, the things that are important in Richmond. We see many of the text works in Richmond often talk about nature and the environment, as this other work by Gwen Boyle, also at Lang Park, which is 
being redeveloped. So she's going to come up with a new work in that location. But in this one, again, it had a, a line from uh, Meeting Places, Richmond's Town Hall by Mary Keene. And here's another one with text at the Steveson Tram building. People been to that one? And, you know, the artist there put the map of the old tram route, you know, with the names of all the stations. You know, kids can actually jump from station to station as they go into the building. And, you know, it, it's again, the words have a lot of powerful meaning. This one, again, now we're getting a little bolder with just really using words. Uh, Joanne Arnott worked with a group of school children at Splukwux Elementary School. And we had some workshops. We, we went to the site of a new pump station. And we talked, what is, what, why do we have pump stations? What's it about? Uh, you know, how does it work with nature? And they came up with words of water that she combined. And then, of course, and then not, finally, I guess my last one, um, at the Community Safety Building, if anybody's been out there over at uh, Five and Steveston, the artist deconstructed the uh, coat of arms of, of the city itself using the iconic phrase, child of the Fraser, embellished on the building. Thank you.